How to grease your landing. Stop scaring the runway. Some of you out here are landing so smooth, I'd swear you buttered the runway beforehand. But others, I've seen carrier landings that were gentler. You're out here making the tires question their life choices. And guess what? That ain't the plane's fault, that's you. So let's fix that mess before the FAA starts billing you for runway repairs. Number one, airspeed control. You're not flying a dump truck. Airspeed is everything. If you're coming in too fast, congrats. You just turned your Cessna into an inflatable bounce house. Too slow? Enjoy your new career in unintentional stall recovery. Your POH, the pilot's operating handbook, tells you the correct approach speed for a reason. Fly it. Not kinda. Not around there. Exactly. If you're out here riding the throttle like it's a carnival game, you're doing it wrong. Trim the dang thing and let it fly. Hot tip. If you're chasing airspeed like a dog after a car, go back and relearn basic pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. And guess what? Here's a pro move. If you can't hold a steady approach speed, you're not ready to land. Go around and try again before we both regret your choices. Number two, stable approach. Set it up or abort mission. A botched approach means a botched landing. If you're yanking the yoke, playing with the power, and wobbling like a newborn giraffe, newsflash, you're not stable. If you wouldn't let a passenger drink a hot coffee on your approach, guess what? Go around. I don't care how much you want to land. Forcing it onto the runway just means you'll be explaining tire damage to maintenance later. Here's a rule of thumb. If you're still making major control corrections at 200 feet, abort mission. And remember, a go around is not failure. Smacking the ground like an asteroid is. Number three, round out and flare. You're not parking a truck. Here's where most of you lose the plot entirely. You don't drop an airplane on the runway like it's a sack of potatoes. You ease it down. As you cross the numbers, you level off, don't climb, don't drop, just float it. Then as your airspeed bleeds off, gently pull back. Not too much, or you'll be soaring off for a go-around tour of shame. Too little? Hope you like buying new struts. Here's a pro tip. If you flare too high, that's not a landing. That's a controlled crash. Smarter move. If you're bouncing like a pogo stick, go around. You're only going to make it worse. Because on the third bounce, you're probably going to break something. Number four, hold off. The plane will land, so let it. Quit shoving the plane onto the runway like you're trying to win a wrestling match. Hold that nose up. Hold it off. If you did everything right, the plane will settle by itself like a happy little marshmallow. If you force it down, you're about to have a bad time. Gold standard. If you hear the stall horn chirp right when you touch down, perfect landing. If you're hearing it at 20 feet, guess what? You flare too high. Bonus tip. If your passengers are filing whiplash claims, rethink your technique. Here's number five. Stay centerline. It's not a runway rodeo. Land on centerline, stay on centerline. I don't need to see you treating the runway like an interpretive dance floor. Use the rudder. Small control inputs. If you're stomping on the rudder pedals like you're driving a getaway car, you're overcorrecting. Look down the runway. If you stare at your nose wheel, you're gonna end up chasing it. You wanna look at the whole picture. Rudder smoothness, light taps, not stomps. This isn't tap dancing. Number six, smooth braking. Stop trying to break the plane. Newsflash, brakes aren't an on and off switch. Slam them too early and you'll be skidding like a bad action movie. Instead, use aerodynamic braking. Hold the nose off, let the drag do some work, and then brake smoothly. Your passengers will thank you, your tires will thank you, and I won't have to yell at you for locking them up and flat spotting. Here's a big brain move. Use back pressure to slow down before you even touch the brakes. How to not get sued. If your passengers are grabbing the dashboard in terror, you're braking too hard. Number seven, crosswind landings. Crosswinds aren't an excuse for garbage landings. Crab into the wind on final, then about a mile out before touchdown, kick the nose straight with rudder while using aileron into the wind. This gets you used to the side slip. Touchdown with the upwind wheel first. If you land sideways, enjoy explaining the gear damage. Fix your approach. If you touch down and veer off course, you didn't even use rudder. One wheel first, upwind main first, then the other, then the nose wheel. This ain't amateur hour. Look, landings aren't luck, they're technique. If you keep screwing them up, it's because you're skipping steps. Stabilize your approach, manage your airspeed, time your flare, and stop forcing the plane onto the ground like it owes you money. If I hear one more student complain about their landings while ignoring every piece of advice I just gave, I'm taking my clipboard out there and personally judging each and every one of you. Now get out there and grease that runway like a pro. And if I hear a thud from the ramp, I will find you.